the Psalms. Let's pray. Almighty God, may your Holy Spirit guide me to preach your word clearly and truthfully and guide our minds to be attentive and our hearts to be receptive, receptive to obey your biblical teaching, O Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, Colossians 3, 16, as we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs in gratitude to God, we remember the word of Christ to us. And the Psalm 103 is a song of praise to God. Now, praying the psalm Right, it's a very good way to talk to God. A psalm is a sacred song or poem used in worship of God. The psalms in the Bible are a collection of poetry and hymns that were written specifically for singing praises to God. About half of the Psalms were written by King David, and then some others were written by Asaph, the sons of Korah, Solomon, and other unknown persons. The Psalms were written in a beautiful literary style of poetry and were actually originally designed to be accompanied by music. You know? When we read the psalm, we need to understand the purpose of the psalm and how we can best incorporate the psalms in our daily lives. So when we read the psalm, we are not uh, reading historical uh, document, but the psalms are powerful, poetic language that highlights the greatness of our God. The psalm also describes human emotion, our real emotion, our struggle, our victories, our feeling of joy and despair. And we can identify with the psalm when we read the psalm. You know, when we read about the emotion you know, shown by the psalmist as we walk through our spiritual journey with God. Now, why do we pray the psalm? Right. So the psalm are not only great for reading and reciting during the time of worship, but praying the psalm is a powerful way to pray God's word. Because reading the psalm is like reading a prayer journal. Right? Filled with the thoughts, our thoughts, our feelings and praise of the psalmist. So praying the psalm is also a great way of expressing our heartfelt emotions, our desire and our love for God. Okay. Now, there are persons in the Bible who pray the psalm. Example, King David. Right? David prayed for his guilt to be pardoned. So in this Psalm 25, verse 11, King David said to God, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Right? And David also prayed for God's direction. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. In Psalm 25, verse 4. And David also prayed for safety from his enemies. Psalm 25, verse 19. He said, Consider how many are my foes and with what violence, hatred they hated me. And David prayed for mercy and love. 
Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been of old. The Apostle John in 1 Revelation 1 8 quotes Psalm 90, verse 2 I am the Alpha and the Omega, say the Lord God, who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. Right? John used this psalm to conclude his greeting to the church as the declaration of God's almighty power. Jesus also used, also quote the psalm. When Jesus hung on the cross, Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is from Psalm 21 verse 1 in which King David laments over God forsaking Israel. Right? So Jesus quotes a psalm of suffering, at the same time a psalm of glory, a picture of the gospel. Now, before Jesus had his last breath, we see Jesus crying out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Right? So this quote is from Psalm 31, verse 5, in which King David says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Right? Now, there are four areas of practical relevance of the psalm. So the psalm answers our search for meaning in life. The psalm help us to answer questions such as, Is there a God? If there is, what is God like? Why do the wicked prosper? Right? In Psalm 73. And why is there death? In Psalm 90. The psalm also unmasks our false view of God. Right? So the psalm exposes the complexity of life with their realistic mention of pain and sorrow. So they present a realistic view of life, earthly life, and our need for God. And the psalm offer a great source of encouragement in life. The psalm leads us to a God-centered life. They do not necessarily take away the problems of life, but they offer us God's given strength for the hours of uh, pain and darkness. Eh? Psalm 23, a familiar psalm to all of us, eh? The Lord is my shepherd is something that we all like to read. The psalm presents an abiding way of life. It deals with such topics as what is the key to true success when we read Psalm 1. How to stop envying and start to live according to God's will. Eh? Psalm 37. How to turn our mourning into dancing, Psalm 30. They are about living life down here on earth with the power from heaven. So we can employ the psalm meaningfully in every, spec, every aspect of our earthly life. Now, true spirituality, eh? this is the fundamental theme of the psalms. There are four prominent themes, eh? concerning true spirituality, 4C, eh? complexity of life, centrality of worship, condition of faith, and certainty of victory. Now, complexity of life, so it concerns, for example, the pain of anxiety, the pain of betrayal by you know, people who are close to us, pain of isolation, right? pain of sin, pain of loss, and ultimately, the pain of death. Now, there are seven actions of worship in centrality of worship. Hearing the voice of God, knowing the heart of God, answering the call of God, seeing the glory of God, discovering the faithfulness of God, and enjoying the presence of God, and empowering the people of God. 
So these are the seven aspect action of uh, worship. Now condition of our faith. Huh? We ask the question: Can God be trusted in the storms of life when we face difficulty, hardship, and so on? And the psalm call us to remain faithful and to have vibrant faith in God, a faith that confirm, affirm God's blessing to us, and accept God's timing, meaning the answer to our prayer may not come immediately but may be delayed, right? And a faith that applauds God's grace and His mercy, and a faith that acknowledges God's power is the God Almighty. He's in control of whatever situation that we are in. Now, certainty of victory. Eh? Now, the historical and theological anchor of victory is the accomplished or the finished work of Christ on the cross. Our victory is in Jesus Christ. He has conquered sin and he has conquered death. Because of his death on the cross, because of his resurrection, we know where we are going after our death. So we are not afraid of death, right? And then Jesus, through the giving of his Spirit, Holy Spirit to us, we have been given the power to overcome sin, right? So Psalm 113, for example, right, is traditionally sung at Jewish uh, festival. The Psalm 113 to 114 during the Passover meal, this is the practice of the Jewish people. And Psalm 115 to 118 after the Passover meal. So how can we pray the Psalm? Right, first, pick, pick a Psalm. We, we don't have to pray the whole psalm, maybe just choose a few verses. But we need to understand what is the purpose of the psalmist to write that psalm, right? the background of that psalm. And then we put the psalm in our own words. Right? And then we add in our feeling, our thoughts into that, uh, that psalm. And then it becomes our version of the psalm. And then we pray. Right. So praying the psalm can cultivate sweet communion with God. It calms the turbulent storms in our life. You know, when we face the difficulty, hardship, and so on. And then it helps to restore our souls eh, by the still and quiet water of God's presence. Right? When we can sense God's help in our life, we can be calm by God, you know, okay? When we go through the difficulty that we face. Now, there are six different types of psalm to pray. The first one is psalm of praise. Huh? Some of the most common psalms in the scripture are psalm of praise to God. Whenever you need to be reminded of the greatness of God, read a psalm of praise. This psalm will take the, your focus off the challenges that you face in your life and help you put your trust in the awesome power of God. Psalm 7, 17 says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of His righteousness. I will sing the praise of the name of the Lord Most High. Right? And then Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul, O my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth 
is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 34 I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord and let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 100, right? Shout for joy to the Lord, O the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let's pray together this psalm of praise together. Lord, I give thanks to you because you are righteous and holy. And I praise you for who you are. Your words say that the praises of your people silence the voice of the enemy. Therefore, I open my mouth and glorify your name. I will worship you with gladness and come before you with joyful songs. As long as I live, may I continue to glorify your name. The Psalm of Protection The Book of Psalms is also filled with prayer and hymns of God's protection over His people. So what a comfort it is to know that God's shield of grace and favour surround us. Right? Psalm 5 Let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. In Psalm 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 12, Because of the oppression of the wicked and the groaning of the needy, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. Psalm 25 May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Psalm 40 Do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. Let's pray this prayer of protection together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for spreading your protection over me and my family. I take refuge in your name as a strong tower, and I rejoice in you as my salvation. I praise you that you are my refuge and fortress. You are my God in whom I trust. Please continue to surround me with your grace and favour as with a shield. Right? Then we have some of blessing. We can confidently pray for God's blessing in our lives because He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. It's mentioned in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. So there are many Psalms that highlight God's blessing over His people. Psalm 21, The Lord gives strength to His people. The Lord blesses His people with peace. And Psalm 3, from the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Psalm 24 Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God his Saviour. Okay. Psalm 123, 128. Huh? Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. All the days of your life, may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem and may you live to see your children's children. 
peace be upon Israel. Okay. Let's pray this prayer of blessing together. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with your peace today. May your joy be my strength as I go about my day. May your blessings of peace, hope, continue to rest upon me and my family. Amen. Then there are psalms of lament. So these are psalms that we can pray to God when we are in deep despair, when we have experienced uh, grief and sorrow. So even on days when we feel down or have suffered great loss, the Lord will meet us in our pain. When we need to cry out to the Lord, He is there listening to us and keeping every tear in the bottle in Psalm 58 verse 6. Eh? No shed tear goes unnoticed by our good God. So when you are in difficult seasons, filled with sadness and grief, know that God has never left your sight and will carry you through the darkest storm. Eh? So here are some examples of Psalms of uh, Lament. Psalm 42 Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Saviour and my God. Psalm 35 I went about mourning as though for my friend or brother. I bow my head in grief as though weeping for my mother. Psalm 56 Record my lament. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then we have some of love. Okay. How wonderful it is to reflect on the love of God. Right? There are many great psalms that tell us about God's unfailing love. Right? So that is the beauty of reading the psalm, a prayer of poetry. Right? For example, Psalm 63, Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Psalm 13, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. Psalm 17, Show the wonder of your great love, you who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their fall. Psalm 20, Psalms 23 Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 36 Your love, O God, reaches to the heaven, your faithfulness to the sky. Psalm 42 By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Then there are Psalms of victory that highlight the victory we have in God. King David was a psalmist, but he was a soldier as well who fought many battles with the help of God. Though we may not fight physical battles like King David, eh, but we are constantly fighting spiritual battle. Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us, our struggles are not against physical things around us, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly reign. So we are fighting evil spirit that tries to, you know, cause us to live, to live this faith in our God. You know, cause us to deviate, to be distracted, and to destroy our communion with God, our spiritual journey with God, right? So here are some song, uh, psalms of victory. Psalms 20. We will shout with joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banner in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests, right? Also Psalm 20. Now I know that the Lord saved his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Psalm 44 
but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversary to shame. Right. Psalms 118. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Psalm 149. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Right? So praying the Psalms is a wonderful way to transform your spiritual life. Eh? If you ever run out of things to pray about, read through the psalm and pray the psalm, right? Using your own words, adding your emotion, your feeling into the psalm. Make the psalm your psalm, your prayer to God. So that psalm will become powerful prayer back to our God. Thanks be to God. He is the God who is worthy of all our praises. Amen.